species around the world have been receding for perhaps millions of years. Receding seas, believe it or not, is why we have to keep dredging our harbors. All harbor authorities have to dredge and keep dredging in order to keep shipping channels open ahead of receding seas. A recent example, for instance, the aircraft carrier Intrepid. It was docked for 24 years on the Hudson at Pier 86. Recent attempts to move the ship proved futile until the dredges were called into clearer passage. Dredging has been in existence for thousands of years. Dredging operations in ancient times, however, were not as sophisticated as they are today. So as a result, many ancient harbors were lost to the receding seas. To understand the phenomena, we have to go back in time to explore successive eras in history. This is the only way to see where sea levels were back then for the purposes of comparison with where they are today. Only historical data can reveal the recession of the seas. From that data, we can interpret and better understand how much seas have receded throughout history. The ancient city of Ephesus was established in about the 10th century BC. It was established on lowlands on the Aegean Sea. The surrounding lowlands comprised malarial salt marshes. The early city had a spacious harbor, was often flooded by the tides. In the first century AD, St. Paul visited Ephesus and spent perhaps three years there spreading the gospel. As time went on, it was necessary to dredge the harbor to maintain shipping access. This proved a formidable task. For well over a hundred years, ending in the early Christian era, efforts were made to dredge the harbor to offset the effects of the receding sea. Attalus made the first attempt to keep the harbor open. Nero, the proconsul, tried next, and finally, the emperor Hadrian. All these successive attempts proved futile, and finally, the harbor project was abandoned. Ephesus lost its harbor forever. Today, Ephesus is six miles inland, left behind by the receding sea. Today, as we stand and look across the miles of land that was once part of the Aegean, you get a grasp of how much the sea has retreated in 2,000 years. The salt marshes are also gone, gone with the receding sea. Today, dredging operations are a major expense in keeping harbors open. The New York Port Authority will be spending billions in the years to come to keep the harbor channels open. As the sea recedes, the cost of dredging escalates. The reasons are twofold. Container vessels keep getting larger and larger, demanding more depth. On the other hand, the sea's recession demands that channel have to be dredged deeper and deeper. Now the New York Port Authority is having to blast bedrock to get the greater depth demanded by the larger ships. The challenge for the future is to keep the harbor open at all costs. The Suez Canal was opened in 1869 with an average depth of 22 feet. Over the last 100 years, they have dredged to 30 feet and then to 40. Now they are dredging to 70 feet to accommodate megaships. All this dredging is done at great cost to keep the canal open. The dredging keeps on because it is necessary for the operation. The Canal Authority, like the New York Court Authority, however, knows nothing about the global phenomenon of receding seas. While the dredging goes on in the Suez Canal, the sea levels in the Red Sea and the Mediterranean have been falling. How do I know this? Again, history. We have to look back at history. Flight of the Israelites across the Red Sea tells us a lot about the sea's recession since that time in biblical history. The receding seas affects all aspects of our lives. So learn more on our next release, which is part five of The Mysterious Receding Seas.
Rome was founded on seven hills, legend tells us. The hills were surrounded by malarial swamps. At the time of the Punic War, the Roman port at the estuary of the Tiber was Ostia. Ostia is 14 miles from Rome. All the grain and other commodities arriving by ship from the far-flung Roman Empire all around the Mediterranean came in to Ostia. The cargo was then transshipped on barges up the Tiber to Rome where it was offloaded on riverside docks into large warehouses. Three Roman emperors, namely Claudius, Trajan and Marcus Aurelius tried to keep the harbor open, but as time passed, the efforts were abandoned. Today, Ostia is three miles from the sea and four meters above sea level. The salt marshes that cover the entire area from Rome to Ostia are all gone with the receding seas. Those three Roman emperors knew nothing about receding seas. Today, the situation has not changed. Today, port authorities worldwide still dredge, totally unaware of the receding sea phenomenon. There is nothing that can be done about the sea's recession. It is ongoing. But what is surprising is that today, we still don't know about falling sea levels. All we hear about today is rising sea levels. How could this be? The most misleading and deceptive factor is the debate in sea level data. Sea level has always been handed down to us as a fixed datum. This is a fallacy. Sea level datum is a myth. It does not exist. If sea level datum does not exist, how can we accept with any certainty that sea levels are rising unless we can prove it. By the same token, I cannot say with any certainty that sea levels are receding unless I can prove it. Well, in this series, I intend to prove it. In my last video, I said that I was going to prove that sea levels are receding and that sea levels are falling. Rising sea levels is science fiction. Sea levels are not rising. Sea levels have been receding for a very long time and show no indication of any opposite rise. Practical examples, however, are always more graphic in proving a point. Newspaper articles and current accounts of everyday events are always more persuasive than hearsay. So to prove my point conclusively, I'm going to cite a couple of practical examples of the sea's recession right here in our very own backyard. An article in the New York Times published recently tells us that the state of New Jersey has been selling the land left behind by the receding seas. It seems that New Jersey has discovered this land bonanza and is making full use of it. The land left behind by the sea is prime real estate as you would imagine. So the state of New Jersey is selling the newly created land for millions of dollars per acre. The land is being sold to casino owners who buy this land because it is choice real estate right on the seafront. The interesting part is that the state now realizes that it could have been selling these lands and collecting taxes since 1776.